guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Plus UI on this device and this is the 28th February 2021 build and as you can see if you notice the build version this is build 3.2 the last time I made a video on this was 3.1 and this one is 3.2 sapphire build and as you can see the build status is stable of course and we have the device change logs over here and we have a ton of interesting things on this rom that i was waiting for and i would say if you just want to slap a custom rom and just use as a daily driver with like the basic important features on the redmi note 7 pro i would say this one is gonna be the most perfect rom as of right now on top of android 11 of course i'll link all the download links and stuff in the description so do not worry also if you want to see the flashing guide and stuff you can check the card right there or you can check the description box below too so this is how the settings panel looks like of course we have the settings logo up there and we have the search settings option if you scroll down we have all these system about phone etc let me show you the about section so here inside android version this is how it looks like and as you can see there is the pixel plus ui logo up there and the device maintainer is sort of of course and the pixel plus ui version is 3.2 sapphire official build and we have the android version and stuff over here the security patch is latest of february 5th 2021 as you were noticing let me actually decrease the brightness a little bit and as you can see you can decrease the brightness just by sliding on top of this like status bar section so that is great and we have the stock kernel as the azure black magic plus kernel and the build time or the build date is 20th february 2021 again let me right now jump into the system and let me show you what else is inside there we have the violet parts inside the system so that's great if you go into the violet parts as you can see this is how it looks we have the display kcl stuff so if you want to customize it you can definitely the display colors i mean and we have the fps info overlay too so if you want to enable that and as you can see the fps info just shows up right there on the left top and we have the clear speaker option so that's great if your speakers are really dirty or something you can use that feature and we have the me sound enhancer or the me audio direct and from here you can choose between these many headset presets of course and in these presets as you are noticing there is also a bass booster feature so if you are someone who loves a lot of bass you can use this preset and get a lot of bass i guess so yeah this is pretty cool and i would say the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is great we also have a system updater so you can check for updates whenever there is a newer build let me go back we have the gesture settings and in here we have the quick torch or the long press power button toggle torch then inside power menu we have the sensitive content and stuff and swipe to screenshot is there and this swipe to screenshot also has the scrolling feature so that's great you can share edit or delete them from here let me go back we also have the system navigation gestures and from here if you go into the settings there is the gesture bar length customization settings and there is the haptic feedback also let me go back yes you cannot change the thickness of this build bar but that's fine and we have the two button and three button navigation as well and inside quickly open camera of course we have this feature and let me go back we have the gboard as the default keyboard over here and gapps is of course included in the rom file itself right now the most interesting or amazing thing about this rom is that it comes with anx camera by default let me show you well this is the anx camera version 185 which was there for the android 10 builds but still it's working on the android 11 build too and let me show you on this like anx camera we have the front camera and stuff everything is working as you are noticing and as you can see with the front camera you can take portrait mode pictures so that's not an issue but the issue is that like you cannot take pictures with the rear camera portrait the portrait mode just does not work with the rear camera so that's the only bug that is there also the 48 megapixel mode may not be working but other than that in the video settings let me show you if you go into the settings and as you can see we can shoot up to 4k 30 fps so no issues with the like video camera settings and we have the pro mode also so you if you want to like thoroughly customize and take a picture you can do that and there are much more things like inside more we have these slow motion and stuff let me show you as you can see you can take slow motion up to 1080p 120 fps so that's not a problem either but again only the portrait mode does not work but the good thing is that anx camera is there by default on this rom that's just amazing 
Right now, let me show you the stock launcher. Well, this is the pixel launcher that we get by default over here of Android 11. As you are noticing, this is the like pretty much simple pixel launcher and we have the suggestions disabling option too. So if you want to disable the suggestions, you can do it from here and we have swipe to access Google app and stuff. So basically it's a pixel launcher. So to the left of the home screen, we get the Google's discovered page. Swiping down gets you to the notification panel. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app. And yeah, widgets and stuff in the home screen is working fine. And if you are looking at the default wallpaper, let me actually like move a icon so that you guys can see it better. So this is how the wallpaper looks like by default. Looks really, really cool, I would say. As you can see, it says Pixel Plus UI, your requirements or goals. So looks very beautiful in my opinion, even the stock wallpaper. Right now, let me show you the quick settings panel. So if you pull down on the home screen, just like this, you get the quick settings panel and you can edit and add multiple toggles from here. As you are noticing pretty much a lot of quick toggles that you get. Okay. So over here, let me show you, we have the Android 11 screen recorder. That is the like one which records the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So that does work. And except for that, we also have the always on display option. If you want to enable that. Heads up disabling option is there. There is also another screen recorder. As you can see, it says you need to choose a folder to save files and stuff. So I'll just go back, but you can use that screen recorder too. And we have the FPS info overlay again. So if you wanna like do it from the quick toggle, you can. But in the quick toggle section, yes, it looks really, really cool. But I would say I miss one toggle that is the reboot toggle still, I'm gonna say. So yeah, that's how it is. The reboot toggle is simply not there in the quick toggle section. So if your power button or something is broken, you will have to live with it. Let me just jump into the settings and let me show you the other stuff. Yes, vaulty calling and stuff should be working fine here. Although I don't have a SIM card in this device right now, but from the previous build right now, it has added the pixelizer on the previous build. There was no customizations at all, but right now some things are there. Let me show you. Yes, it's not a lot, but the very important things are here in the pixelizer. Let me show you, we have the quick settings, like the default one, which opens if you tap on the pixelizer is the quick settings one. And there is a traffic indicator. So very useful. We have the traffic indicator. If you want to enable that, then we can go to the status bar. As you can see, there are all these tabs on the bottom. So right now I'm on the status bar settings and we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar that works flawlessly, no issues. And we have the brightness control too. So you can slide a finger again on the status bar and that should adjust the brightness. And I, I have noticed that if I go all the way to the left, it doesn't like do the thing. As you can see, it just increases the brightness to too much. But if I leave a little bit before that, as you can see, the brightness does lower down. So yeah, that's how it is as of right now. Let me actually show you the other things like the lock screen. Here we have the force fingerprint authentication. That is just one of the most amazing features in my personal opinion. And I do love this feature because I use the device as decrypted. So if your device is not decrypted, this feature won't work, I guess. But this is the feature where like you just reboot the device and tap the fingerprint scanner. It unlocks your device for you. You don't have to enter pin every time you reboot. So that's the most amazing feature for me at least. And we have the double tap to sleep option over here too. And inside in the extras, we have the power menu option. And here we do get the advanced reboot. So let me show you, this is how the power menu looks like. And if you tap on advanced, there are the advanced reboot options. So you can directly reboot normally the system. And then we have the bootloader option. Then we also have directly rebooting to recovery option, or you can just reboot the system UI. So these are great features in my opinion. And we have the swap buttons if you're using two or three button navigation. So that's it for the pixelizer. And in the battery settings, let me show you, this is how it looks. The animations looks really, really cool. If you're using this ROM, normally I would say you can get six to seven hours of screen on time easily on this ROM, no issues whatsoever. We have the battery percentage enabling option. This enables the battery percentage on the status bar, of course. And here we have the turn on light when charging and stuff. This is for the notification light, I guess. We have the battery saver, adaptive battery, etc. And we have the screen on time over here, of course, and 18 watt first charging should be working fine here. Let me jump into the display settings. This is how it looks. We have the animations again on the top looks very beautiful again. And we have the brightness level, the dark theme and talking with dark theme. Let me show you. This is like pitch black. This does not show you any gray kind of background color or something. So this is definitely pitch black. I love the dark theme over here on this room. And in the nightlight, we have these kind of intensity control over here if you enable that and we have the styles and wallpapers of course and from here you can customize this and you can choose between these many fonts as you are noticing also there are these icons of the like status bar icons over here and again we have these colors the accent colors over here so you get a lot of colors that like the red one and 
we have these kind of yellow and stuff so you can enable or like customize any color over here no issues so far and in terms of the wallpapers of course you get these many wallpapers over here the live wallpapers and stuff you can download and apply in the grid settings we have like the 4x4 grid and this is the default one i guess 5x5 let me go back we have the adaptive or auto brightness then the screen timeout then the auto rotate screen and stuff and display size dpi etc you can customize then we have the lock screen thing and from here you can enable always on display if you want to for some reason and double tap to wake is there enable blurs options are there and there is a full screen apps with that you can force particular apps to use the full screen of the device so you can toggle them that's good and if you scroll down we have the sound settings and here this is how the sound setting looks like you can customize the media call etc volume from here by the way this is how the volume panel looks like you can expand it like this it does not expand on the volume panel itself but pretty much it looks like stock android 11 and if you scroll down we have the dial pad tone screen locking sound etc touch vibration touch sound and the screenshot sound disabling option as well again the mi audio direct is inside system and inside security we have the face unlock and stuff and let me show you the thing which kind of speed now so here i'll just double tap on the status bar and by the way the double tap to wake 2 is working fine as you are noticing so right now let me just double tap over here and as you can see it just like locked the device and right now as you are noticing the thing which kind of speed is fairly fast let me show you one more time and again it unlocks super fast no issues whatsoever let me actually show you up close as you can see, it unlocks the device very, very fast, no issues whatsoever with the Fingbit scanner. Currently, I'm going to set up the face unlock. So let me just try it. Even though there is an obstacle in front of my face, that's the wire of my lab mic. So let me just try it now. Right now, I'll just double tap to wake. And as you can see, it unlocks. Let me try one more time. I'll double tap to wake. And as you can see, it unlocks. So again, let me show you the face unlock speed is fairly fast. No issues whatsoever. It unlocks with the face unlock. No problems. And even if I use the finger width scanner after setting a face unlock, that too works fine here. No issues. And here are the n 2 and Geekbench score of this ROM. Currently, let me show you some other things like the LED RGB remote app. And with that, the IR cluster over here is working fine now, which was not working in the previous build or it was working for only once. Then it was forced rebooting the device. But here that's not the problem anymore and as you are noticing it is working super fine whenever i'm tapping the like options over here it is working as you are noticing in the camera so yeah that light over there means that the ir blaster is working super fine actually and talking about the safety net test as you can see it passes right out of the box so you can use banking apps like google pay over here without any issues and talking about the drm info as you are noticing it shows l1 over here so that means you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p here without any issues. If you have not broken it, of course. Right now, let me show you the recent panel. This is how it looks like. And as you can see, you can clear all the apps from the left side over here. And we have the screenshot option or you can select a particular text by just tapping on the screen, I guess, as you are noticing. Or you can tap here to select particular text. So in my personal opinion, I would say this ROM is very, very smooth and very amazing experience over here that you get with the important customizations that one needs to daily drive with a custom ROM. So in my opinion, this is by far one of the best custom ROMs for the Redmi Note 7 Pro. And I can definitely daily drive with this ROM without any issues because it has all the features that I need. And like I would say all the most important features that I definitely use on daily basis. So that's the reason why this has become one of my favorite ROMs out there for the Redmi Note 7 Pro at least. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. And definitely if you want to support my channel, do hit the upload button and donate some bucks if you have extras. So thank you so much for watching this video guys again. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.